What's up everyone, this is Ben Follins Media Corner back again with another AK After I Saw review episode for today. But this is actually going to be a catch-up AK After I Saw review episode. Uh, first time I've actually ever done one of these before. This one's going to be on talking about the movies I saw that were, that were released by Netflix. Which these films, these ones I really wanted to talk to you guys about these movies but I got held up and I was quite busy and I had a few time off from YouTube and all that. So... This is going to be my um, first ever catch-up video I've ever done. So this one's going to be on the films I saw released by Netflix, which these ones I never talked about, but I'm going to give you guys my views on these movies. So this is not going to be a whole big in-depth video like I usually do, but there's some little bit of depth of what I'm going to be talk of what movie I'm talking about. So let's kick off with the first film for this video, for this review for these reviews, and this the first one's going to be on Oxygen, and it comes to us from the director of Crawl and the Hills Have Eyes remake, Alexandra Aja, and I had an awesome time with this movie. This was a really fun, uh, suspenseful, like claustrophobic sci-fi thriller. It has pretty good performances. It's a pretty well creative story about a woman trapped in her chamber and she has no idea what's going on and she's running out of oxygen. And we see her like really living what's going on and all that. And I had an awesome time in this film. Although after it ended, um, I wasn't like, it didn't like affect me or anything after I've watched it, after what happened at the end of the film. But I still had an awesome time with this one. And I'll give this movie a four and a half out of five. Another one I saw was The Woman in the Window. I was really looking forward to this one back in 2020 uh, because it has a big number of big name cast members in this film, such as Amy Adams, Brian Tyree Henry, Anthony Mackie, Gary Oldman, Julianne Moore, Jennifer Jason Leigh, and directed by a great director, Joe Wright, the man behind Darkest Hour, Pride and Prejudice, and Atonement. Although this film, it did a few test screenings, but it wasn't that well received, and they had to end up doing re-edits and reshoots. And this movie skipped entirely for its cinema run, and went to Netflix, and unfortunately this one really wasn't that good here, you guys. Well, performances all around are pretty solid enough, that's the only thing I can praise for it, but as for everything else, the story isn't that well, wasn't that really well investing, and it didn't get me engaged whatsoever, and the direction was really poor, and the editing too was really, really bad. Just nothing could save this film, unfortunately. So I'll give this one a 1 out of 5. Another one I saw was Wish Dragon. I actually saw this one with my girlfriend and we both seemed to enjoy this one. This was a pretty enjoyable animated film from Sony Animation, although it's not the best since The Mitchells vs. the Machines, which that was released uh, um, back in April. And well, this was released back in June. Uh, I like that one a little bit more than this one, but this was a still enjoyable watch, although it's pretty much basically Aladdin, but in China. Instead of involving a genie, involves a, a, a magical dragon in, in a teapot. Um, it was pretty enjoy enjoyable enough. It has pretty good animation and it has some pretty entertaining moments, but it's just basically just an opposite version of Aladdin, but in China, really. Instead of involving a talking genie, involves a, you know, a talking dragon. So I'll give this one a three and a half out of five. Another one I saw on Netflix, which this was actually a theatrical released film, and I saw this in cinema back in cinemas in, in the back in the cinemas in August of 2021. And that was The Last Letter from Your Lover. And I had a good time with this one. It was a pretty good solid time with this one. Um it has pretty well, pretty well acted performances by Shailen Woodley and Felicity Jones. I thought they were really good in this film. And the storytelling of this film is told, told in a few different perspectives. It's set in different times when we do see Shailen Woodley in the past and then Felicity Jones in like the present day. I didn't really expect that going into it when I first saw the trailers. And it it, it does get a bit slow, pay, slow pace since this is only an hour and 50 minutes. And there are some story proportions in the film that does get a bit repetitive but still though it was a good time and it was it was a good so, good solid time with this one and i i'll give this one a three and a half out of five another one i saw was vivo which i actually this was another one i watched with my girlfriend and i enjoyed this one a little bit more than west dragon this was a great animated film and this is definitely another great lin-manuel miranda film which last year for him was such a big year for him you know he had so many so many films released last year you know in the heights this movie and then tick tick boom uh, but here for Vivo, I had a great time with it. It has great colorful animation, it has great music, and it has really good entertaining voice cast. Well, there's not a whole lot of recognizable voice actors I know of other than Lin Manuel Miranda and the, as well as Zoe Zaldana from the MCU. I thought everyone was pretty good. I had a great time with this one, and I'll give this one a 4 out of 5. Another one I saw was Beckett, which this one's an action thriller starring John David Washington and Alicia Vikander. And this was a pretty decent watch. This is sort of like a fugitive sort of story, a fugitive action thriller, which we've already seen stuff like that before in the past. But it has pretty solid performances. It has some pretty solid action. Not uh, mem not memorable or anything like that, but it was a decent time. And it's, it's definitely not a terrible action film. It's definitely not 
an, an action film we've already seen before like this in the past and involves fugitives and all that. It's definitely not a bad one. It's just a decent time with this one. I had a decent time with this one, so I'll give this one a 3 out of 5. And I saw another action thriller after Becca, which this one was at, was uh, Sweet Girl, which this one stars Jason Momoa outside of the DC Extended Universe as Aquaman. And this one, I did check this one out after he after hearing what people have already said about this on the internet, and I can see why there's a lot, a lot of negativity all over the internet because this film, I did not like this one. This is definitely not one of Jason Momoa's best roles outside of the DC Extended Universe as Aquaman. Well, he did he, for what he was given. I thought he did fine. But other thing, everything else surrounding him just really wasn't that good. Like the story was cliched and just really confusing. Uh, the action sequences weren't even that memorable, and they just weren't even that entertaining. Because I was just getting pretty much bored for what was going on. Just nothing really could save this movie overall. And this is definitely one, of, definitely not one of Jason Momoa's best roles. Like I said, outside outside of Aquaman. So I'll give this one a one out of five. Another film I saw was He's All That, which this is actually a gender reverse to She's All That, which I did watch that before I saw this one. And that film, I think that film is pretty decent. It's a pretty decent teen film. But for this one, I did not really like this movie. This was awful. And this is definitely Netflix's worst film of last year. This is even way worse than Sweet Girl and The Woman in the Window. Because this film was just not funny. It wasn't even that entertaining. And it's just, it's just, it wasn't even an enjoyable watch. It has bad performances. It has really bad performances, and it, it's just not even that funny. And I think this and this was just really, really boring. And honestly, I just, I just, I just prefer you stick with uh, She's All That because I don't really suggest this film whatsoever because this movie was just awful. And I've got nothing else to say about that, so I'll give this one a five. Another one I saw was Worth, starring Michael Keaton, Amy Ryan, and Stanley Tucci. And it's basically about after the events of 9-11 about and how the family how the family uh, deal with a deal after after all that went whenever of a family member who they loved has have, has just died in that event. And I had a good time with this one. This was a pretty good drama. It has pretty good performances by Keaton and Tucci and Ryan. They were they were all really good. Um although um well the storytelling is pretty well investing. It, there are some there are some portions of a storytelling that can make that can get a bit angry for a few parts that maybe be uncomfortable for viewers out there, and it does get be and it does get a bit slow paced because it kind of it is almost a bit of a slow burn film, but still though it's a pretty good investing film, and I'll give this one a three and a half out of five. And I saw another action thriller af after after um, I saw Sweet Girl, which that was the last one I watched, but the next one I watched after that one was Kate, starring Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Woody Harrelson, and. This one, I was really good. I was pretty interested to see this one since it's from the producers of the John Wick series. And this one, I thought was just an okay watch. It's definitely not a great, like, female assassin action film since the Kill Bill movies or any other good, entertaining female assassin movies, like, say, Soul with Angelina Jolie or anything like that. This was just an okay watch. While Mary Elizabeth Winstead was not too bad in the film, as well as Woody House, and everyone else was not too bad in this film. I thought they gave solid performances. But it just has some cliche formulas to other like female assassin action thrillers, and there wasn't that much memorable what's anything that much memorable whatsoever. So this was just an, an okay watch, and I'll give this one a two and a half out of five. Next one I saw was Night Books. I was really interested in seeing this one since this is from the director of Brightburn, David Yorofsky, and this one's a dark fantasy kids film, which this one's sort of like an opposite version of Goosebumps, which I enjoyed the Goosebumps. Well, I, I enjoyed the first Goosebumps movie. Well, the sequel, it was not not so much. It's just an okay watch. But this one, I had a really good time with this one. This was a really good, like, dark fantasy film. Um, although I do prefer Goosebumps a bit more than this, though. But this was still a really good watch. It has pretty good, like, pretty good creative sets and creature designs and everything like that. And the kids were pretty good in this film. So I'll give this one a three and a half out of five. Another one I saw after Night Books was The Guilty, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, and is directed by Anton Fuqua. And this is actually a remake to the original foreign film, uh, but, in the but this one is an American film. And I had a good time with this one. Jake Gyllenhaal's great in the film. Everyone's really well acted in this film. It's pretty well directed for, 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 for a tense crime thriller like this one. And there are some good tense moments in this film. Although the premise is pretty much sturdy and is pretty much inferior to the original film. But still though, I had a good time with this one. And I'll give this one a three and a half out of five. Next one I saw was Tick Tick Boom, which I was dying to review this film. 
and this stars Andrew Garfield as Jonathan Larson and he is phenomenal in this movie this is one of his best roles since Hacksaw Ridge he's incredible to watch and for his singing as well he's amazing and when he breaks into musical for musical numbers it's it's amazing to watch it's it's really well directed by Lin-Manuel Miranda in his directorial, directorial debut and he's he did a great job with all of that and the story pretty much is really well investing for the life of Jonathan Larson of him becoming 30 I really, really, dug, I really dug the whole storytelling. Although there are times in the film it does get a bit, pretty much a bit slow paced, but I still had a lovely time with this one, and I'll give this one a four and a half out of five. Next one I saw was Red Notice. Uh, this comes to us from the director of Dodgeball and stars Dwayne Johnson, Ryan Reynolds, and Gal Gadot. And I had a pretty decent time with this one for an action comedy like this one. Uh, the three main stars in the film, they're all pretty good in the film, and they're really entertaining for the chemistry together on screen and the the humor in this film. It's pretty funny and pretty entertaining for the most part. Although there are times where some of the jokes don't really land, don't really land for me whatsoever. But still, though, it's it, they they were pretty fun enough, pretty fun enough, and the action sequences are pretty pretty exciting and entertaining for the most part. And um, although for the originality, they kind of it kind of lacks some of the original, some of the lack of the it kind of lacks some of the original originality from other action comics that we've already had before in the past, but. Still though, I wouldn't, but I wouldn't say this is a bad film. It's, it's just a decent time, and if you're a fan of action comedies or you're a fan of any of these three big main stars, you'll have a good time with this one. I'll give this one a three, a three out of five. And the next one I saw was Don't Look Up, which I've heard a lot of people talking about this movie. It's got a big name cast of just Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Mark Rylance, Jonah Hill. Meryl Streep, Timothy Chalamet, and a whole bunch of other big name actors you could ever name. Um, I had a pretty good time with this one, and, I'm, and I'm, I was really surprised that this one got, was really polarized by critics, because um, some critics were really polarizing this film, but I had a good time with this one for, for a sci-fi black comedy film like this one. Uh, everyone's really great in the film, and they were all really funny for a film like this one, for a satire film like this one. And although... For the editing choices in the film, it can be pretty much odd, and there are some like imagery shots in the film which kind of which is a bit odd as well. And the storytelling, while while it is a pretty long film, it's kind of well paced for a few storytelling moments. But there are times in the storytelling where you kind of feel like it's it's over, but it just builds up to more and more for what's going to happen since this is a pretty long film. Uh, but still, though, guys, I had a good time with Don't Look Up, and I'm going to give this one a three and a half out of five. And the last film I saw on Netflix was The Power of the Dog. Starring Benedict Cumberbatch, Kirsten Dunst, Jesse Plemons, and Cody Smith McPhee. A lot of people talking about this, and I had to give this a watch. And I had a brilliant time with this one. This is a brilliant Western drama. And this is definitely one of Benedict Cumberbatch's best roles outside of Doctor Strange and, of course, Sherlock Holmes. He's excellent in this movie. And Cody Smith McPhee is fantastic in the movie. Kirsten Dunst is amazing. Um, after since outside playing Mary Jane and Spider-Man and other great roles she's done. She's amazing here in this film. It's really well acted, it's beautifully directed, and it's such a great storytelling for a Western film like this one. And obviously I suggest you check this one out if you're a fan of Western films or if you're a fan of any of these big name actors. And I'll give this one a 5 out of 5. So that's it for my catch-up reviews on these uh, films I saw for at least by Netflix. And let me know what you think of any of these films. If you have seen any of these films, did you either like any of these or did you hate any of these films? So thank you guys so much for watching for my catch-up review of these Netflix films. And as always, this has been Fogg's Media Corner signing off.